What's up, YouTube? It's the Action Figure Grader coming back to you with a look at a line of modern Star Wars toys that we have not talked about in a while, and that's the 30th Anniversary Collection. And I had two impetuses, impeti, two reasons that I wanted to show the 30th Anniversary Collection and what prices are doing. First, Nick over at Only One Kenobi did some really good detective work and took a look at what the 30th Anniversary Darth Revan has done since the Vintage Collection version came out. And it's kind of followed the same path that a lot of original issue Vintage Collection have done since the reissue has come out. It's not something I even thought about, but this was always a very, very expensive figure. And now the price has just dropped through the floor. So great detective work by Nick over at Only One Kenobi. I'll put a link in the video description to his video that came out maybe a couple of weeks ago by the time this video airs. Uh, but I wanted to show that. The other reason was that a Patreon supporter and good friend of mine, Mike C., asked for a 30th anniversary collection update. And I didn't find a ton of interesting data, but there were some pretty cool ones that I wanted to talk about. And the first one is Hermie Odell. This is a really large figure. It's kind of like Efant Mon and just a, one of these massive figures that is pretty beloved with Star Wars collectors and probably not going to get re-released anytime soon. And the interesting thing is, is that some, not all, but some of these loose, complete Hermie Odals are going for about the same price as what a mint on card is. And so what does that tell you? It just means that people are opening them up and putting them in their Katana Sail Barge diorama or some kind of other Jabba the Hutt diorama that they got set up in their collection room. So this one sold down in Australia for $59. This one was here in the U.S. for $35 plus $5 shipping. So if you're looking for one, 40 to about 60 bucks is about right. I would say that this one probably went a little bit higher in Australia because of currency conversion or because an Australian buyer bought it that didn't have to pay exorbitant shipping from the U.S. to Australia. And, you know, obviously the Australian market probably doesn't have nearly the amount of stuff that we do here in the U.S. or even in Europe. So uh, just a couple of data points there for loose ones. And then this one was a mint on card in very clean condition, crystal clear bubble. And by the by the way, I have seen a lot of 30th anniversary collection figures that have started to yellow. So it's interesting to see how some <clears throat> modern Star Wars figures... These are, what, from 2007 or so, 2008? So it's interesting how a lot of those have started to yellow now, 30 years, or uh, not 30 years, but, uh, you know, let's call it 20 years uh, or less, you know, 15 years since these were released. And, uh, you know, we'll probably see more of that for some of these other modern lines. But I have seen a lot of eBay listings for 30th anniversary collection with yellow blisters. So just a side note, it could be storage issue, it could be heat, but... Uh, maybe they all do that eventually. Who knows? But this one was mint on card and, and it was listed for $53. Best offer accepted. I did not look up what it sold for, but uh, just given these loose, complete prices versus this mint on card, not a big disparity and probably means it's an opener. So I just wanted to point that out. Uh, likewise, as it relates to Jabba's sail barge or any kind of Jabba the Hutt diorama, I thought this price was interesting. This is a 30th anniversary Max Rebo band. This one sold over in the UK for 200 pounds, which is 252 US dollars. Interesting because you can get a loose, complete Kenner version for about that price. Now, this one is packaged, but uh, you know, I think it's because the old Kenner molds probably don't fit in with your vintage collection kind of style if you've got the sail barge. Uh, and so people are probably buying this set to open up and, and put in Jabba's Palace. So I, I just thought that was kind of an interesting side note as well. But that one sold for 200 pounds, which is 252 U.S. dollars. Big number. Speaking of musicians, here is the band members from the Tatooine Cantina. And I, I just thought this, this was worth pointing out. Uh, given how expensive they are. I had no idea these were so expensive, especially because we sort of have this band in the vintage collection, Figure and Dan. So I, I don't know. You know, you can buy the whole set, you know, the little box set with the musicians, but these were all mint on card and it sold for $365. Now they did come with different instruments and things like that, but wow, that is a massive number. And I just wanted to point that out. Maybe it's a one-off type situation. I didn't find any other kind of recent data to support this 365 number, but it was the entire band all in one shot. So maybe someone paid up just to knock it all out in one go. I thought that was kind of interesting. Uh, here was the Emperor's Shadow Guard, and I, I just picked some random ones that either I did not remember 
being actually existing or I forgot. And this was from the Force Unleashed. I just thought this was kind of interesting. Emperor Shadow Guard with the black kind of Emperor's Guard outfit. That one sold for 55 pounds, which is 69 US dollars, but a pretty cool figure. I mean, you know, kind of rudimentary in terms of the sculpt and things like that. But, you know, it's kind of cool to see a ERG with a black robe and black kind of paint apps. Uh, next up, we had a Tri-Droid. Uh, you know, I just, this, this one I included because I had never seen it before. And it's just such a massive figure and kind of a cool sculpt that I thought it was worth kind of just showing. So this, I guess, was from Revenge of the Sith. And uh, this one sold for 28 bucks. So very reasonably priced, but... Uh, I, I just had not seen that one before, or I forgot about it, and I just thought that was a cool figure sculpt. Uh, next up, here is one that does kind of look like it's yellowed. So, again, you got to be really careful when you're buying some of these, but this is another example going back to what I mentioned at the beginning of the video, how when a similar character comes out in the vintage collection, like Revan did, and the original issue has really dropped in price a little bit. This was kind of an ultimate galactic hunt version of the animated debut Boba Fett. This is one I do have. And this one sold for $16. They used to go for a lot of money. Now, it could be that it's because the, the blister does look a little bit yellowed. Maybe it's my imagination. It could just be the card art poking through, but it looks a little bit yellowed. But 16 bucks for that, and I found several data points at $20, $22. And given that they came out with that Target exclusive droids Boba Fett, uh, I just thought that was kind of an interesting data point to show you guys, given that it has come down quite a bit, uh, because this is the Ultimate Galactic Hunt version that is was pretty sought after for a time there. Next up, here's another one. This one sold over in the UK for 25 pounds or 31 US dollars. So again, uh, you know, if it's something that you're looking for, this one looks like it's got a clear blister. But uh, anyway, I just, I think it's a really cool concept kind of uh, card art there, but you know, uh, it's it's a little bit different than the Target exclusive that has kind of the, the the comic animated style card art. All right, now going back to what I mentioned uh, by Nick, o only one Kenobi. He he really rightly pointed out that Darth Revan on this tech card back has really dropped in price. I mean, we, we the, probably the last time I did one of these, I didn't look at it, but these were going for more like eighty to ninety, maybe even a hundred dollars in some cases, and now they're going for a lot less. So this one sold for fifty five dollars. This one sold for $65, so maybe a little higher on that one. Uh, but also, Darth Malak has also seen a drop in price. And uh, this one sold for $40. And then uh, this one was CAS 95 grade. So it was graded 95 and only sold for 100 bucks. I mean, you got to think that grading on this was probably 65 bucks plus shipping to and from. Not looking like you got your money back, just given that you can buy uh, a... a a mint on card ungraded for 40 bucks. It's probably another 60 or so plus shipping to grade it. So this, this seller sold it at a loss after eBay fees. And it was a very high grade example, 95, 90, 95 for an overall 95 that sold for a hundred dollars free shipping. That was a good deal there. And then this was a pair, both Revan and Malik that sold for a hundred dollars. It used to be, this was like $200 to get both of them together. So, you know, you're probably looking at what a 40 to 50% drop in, in those two figures, um, and I, I just thought that was a really interesting point by only one Kenobi. And uh, it's not something I even thought about, but once those Darth Revens popped up on the vintage collection and they look beautiful, by the way, I just saw boss Bounty's graded examples, uh, that he just got back from UKG and they look stunning. You want to talk about tempting. I was like, man, I really want to get one of those graded. They look awesome. So, uh, just an interesting side note that, uh, I wanted to point out that only one Kenobi, put together. Uh, here are a couple of box sets and vehicles to wrap things up in this short video. This is another one I hadn't seen before or I forgot about, but this is the capture of the Tantive IV battle pack. It's got a couple of rebel fleet troopers, a couple of storm troopers, Vader, plus the torture droid, that little torture probe droid. So I thought that was a cool set. I loved kind of the 3D effect of the box art and uh, that one sold for $44. Uh, this seller does have four more of those still available, but I just thought that was a cool setup and one I, I don't remember seeing before or I forgot about. Uh, next up, we got the Thai Bomber. This is one I wish they would re-release in the Vintage Collection line. This is a Target exclusive that came with a TIE Fighter pilot. That one sold for $98.99 plus $18 shipping. Uh, next up was a TIE Interceptor or an Elite TIE Interceptor from Toys R Us. Beautiful box art. That one also came with an exclusive 181st Squadron TIE Fighter pilot. And you can see he's got kind of like a, a different jacket or flak suit 
uh, with white paint apps on that one. So that's a cool setup too. That one sold for $130 free shipping. Uh, next up, this is one I've talked about in the past. This is the Toys R Us exclusive Y-Wing Fighter. Beautiful box. I just love the way it shows inside that box. It's really set up nicely for a shelf. And it's gotten really expensive. This one sold for $185 and change plus another $18 shipping. And then finally, here was another one that I didn't realize was so expensive. This is Obi-Wan Starfighter with the hyperspace ring. And uh, just a, a great looking box there with Ewan McGregor in the upper right hand corner. That one sold for $200, $200 for that. So that was another Toys R Us exclusive that I just thought I'd point out to round out this items, these items that sold all within about the last month or so. Otherwise, there wasn't too many other items that I thought were worth talking about, but uh, I just wanted to kind of satisfy a Patreon supporter who asked for an update on the 30th anniversary collection. Thanks as always for watching, and I'll be back soon.